Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching Enemy, and we're here with Rao Reynolds from Enstakari. How you doing? Yeah, pretty good, man. How are you? Smashing. Yeah, as as good as you can be in these strange, strange times. How's your uh, your first week of freedom going? Yeah, nothing's really changed yet. I haven't I haven't made use of. Uh, of, of the great outdoors the great outdoors being pubs and hairdressers obviously but yeah no I'll, I'll get out later this week i think hey your hair's looking all right did you do a self trim yeah well my yeah my girlfriend gave it gave it a, a seeing to the other the other week because it was yeah getting a bit out of hand that's looking pretty good it's almost exactly a year to the day that um we last spoke <laughs> and um wow that means it's also nearly a year to the day of your of the previous record, which also means now one year on, you're now announcing. Well, it's the first time I've said it out loud. Moratorium broadcasts from the interruption. Yes, which is, as I understand it, a live album like no other for a time like no other. <laughs> you can, you nice. can keep that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what can you tell us about um, this selection of recordings and? And what they capture about Enshikari? Yeah, yeah, it's a load of uh, of sessions we did from the first lockdown onwards throughout the year. The ones that felt special, not the sort of makeshift last minute midnight on Instagram lives that <laughs> are probably better off forgotten. I think one of the most special ones was um, recorded on a little uh, nature reserve, this little hallowed bit of of, of green land uh, near me in North London, um, where I did a, a couple of tracks just there in the middle of the woods, and that that those felt like like you know really i really enjoyed those renditions and it, it you know at a time when everything was was quite manic and quite quite difficult to deal with um that was like a nice moment of calm yeah and then there's some other tracks that um are actual studio tracks so the dreamers hotel i've done a an alternative version it's like an acoustic orchestral version of that uh, and i've also finally got down my heroes cover um which is a, a track i've played at various acoustic sets uh, over the years i've finally got got that down on onto wax covering bowie is is you know one hell of a challenge what, what do you think you brought mm. to that track um well it's a, it's a much more i won't say it's like you know like how everyone just does like down tempo versions sort of like you know something for the mns christmas advert and stuff <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not a million miles away from that sort of thing it's just like um i, I love like open tuning like really I guess sort of that, that very like beautiful keys, you know, very positive, very major, which you normally think of the major key as as, as not very interesting, but it's, but it's there's so much depth to it that people don't realize. So um, it, yeah, it's a very sort of uplifting, um, but but more um, stripped back uh, cover really. And, and uh, I managed to uh, write and record with the Sophia Symphonic. So that was great as well to, to work with them. They're all brilliant. Um, and yeah, I think it's just a, it's a, a nice, uh, slightly slightly different um, rendition. Well, you guys were originally planning to, to hit the road last summer. So just wondering, what was it like to occupy these songs in such a different way and kind of form that more intimate connection with your fans? I know it's weird because, you know, some of, I think when I first started doing live streams, it's almost just as nerve wracking as going on stage, especially when you see sort of the numbers that, you know, people were getting on those those first few weeks of lockdown when everyone was just like sat at home. Um, you, you do sort of start imagining everyone just sitting, staring at you. So it's kind of, it has a similar psychological effect, I think, to walking out on stage, you're very conscious of, of the eyes on you. So it's similar in that way, I think, but it, it's, there's obviously no real sense of connection. You know, I, I can't see the people. I can I can do all I can to imagine it and, and be affected by that. But at the same time, you, you don't feel the the atmosphere. You know, you don't get a sense of, of, of connection. So it, it, it is really different and it, it doesn't really quench the thirst. You know, that it doesn't quench my sort of starving uh, <laughs> desire for, uh, you know, connection to be on the stage and to be singing with people in a room. On Friday, you're announcing a new book, um, A Treatise on Responsibility, Perspectives on Humanity oh, Hereafter. How did sorry, I do? Sorry, it's possibility. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit of a mouthful. You don't have to do the subtitle. <laughs> a Treatise on Responsibility. We'll leave this bit in, it'd be great. A Treatise on res Possibility. What can you tell us about that, Ralph? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, basically, this is what I've been doing with, with my time off tour. Um, I was meant to be writing a similar thing to what I've done on the other albums, which is kind of a, a bit of a company, accompanying literature, which is just the lyrics 
and then a short sort of essay for each song, which you know talks about the inspirations, the motivations behind the, the song and the lyrics. Um, and with the time off tour, I thought it's finally time to do something a bit more in depth. So this is like a, it's, it follows the the lyrics of, of our last album, Nothing Is True and Everything Is Possible, but it's really like an, an analysis that the an analysis of the world that that album was written in as opposed to analysis of the lyrics um so you know it, I, i'm so so grateful for, for all, so many people for uh contributing and for helping me with the the research and so it goes into social psychology anthropology philosophy it's, it's, it's a real sort of in-depth look at basically the uh, human possibility like wh where we're going what our potential is the trajectories that we're on i mean we all you know, we could sit here for the rest of this interview and talk about the the list of crises that we're, that we're currently facing as a, as a species. Um, so it's looking at those and looking at uh, as, as starting to look at solutions and how we can do things differently. Um, so it was it was a year of just immense learning for me, um, and and to, to to try and get that all down into a a book that isn't too much of a bloody doorstop. Um, it's pretty hefty, but. Um, yeah, and and we're we're just on the we're just finishing the what will hopefully be the last draft now, so it'll be out in time for the for the release date. Yeah, this this summer. Well, the last time we spoke, you said that um, the new record had kind of well, the latest record had kind of become more prescient as lockdown was taking over. That was over a year ago. Do you find that's become more profound in digging into it in, with a lot more depth? I mean, I'm so thankful for this time because I've learned so much more about my own lyrics, you know, the sort of the concepts that I touched on in the album, I, I now know so much more about, and it, it's been such a journey for me. And yeah, th th there's there's so much, so many things, like so many concepts that, that have come to light that, that, that yeah, I've, 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 I feel a bit more established in, you know, whether it's human nature, whether it's climate change, um, th yeah, there's, there's all sorts of things. I mean, today, like uh, uh, after this, I'm getting to speak to, a professor of psychology at Berkeley, you know all these like titans of um, of, of knowledge and of ideas and of solutions. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, to be able to instill that into this book and to be able to be sort of almost pushed by, by the album, you know. So I've written this line, but could I actually back it up? Do you know what I mean? Like I, I have these ideas, um, and I have the, a sort of general sense of where we're going wrong but do I really know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and, you know, I, uh, often I haven't. And it's been a real a real learning process. And also last time we spoke, it was there was a general kind of feeling of community and empathy due to the, the being in the first stage of lockdown. It kind of felt that we'd emerged from this, a better society and change might be possible. I mean, how do you feel about that one year on? I think as we come out of, of lockdown, um, there's going to be more and more civil disobedience and protest and, and I think as well, people that aren't activists, you know, like that often we look at this, we look at activists as like some sort of other, you know, that it's almost like they're career activists kind of thing. And we see that a lot with this thing, Extinction Rebellion, but like now it's just anyone, anyone who actually stops and thinks about the way, the directions that, that things are, are going in is now extremely energized and, um, sort of realizing that we, we need to start start fighting on a on a very serious scale um so, so yeah i think increasingly so we're going to see demands for for all sorts of of changes you know be it within healthcare or be it um it, within environmentalism and, and and fighting climate change and um have you guys been working on much new material having been pulled from the road or uh mate um <laughs> I, I i've it's difficult talking about this because like everywhere I see, I see like people in the studio or, you know, oh, we've recorded this or we're doing this, people are bringing new music. And I still haven't written anything since we finished the album. So we finished the album January 2020. So it's over a year now. Um, and, you know, throughout last year, it was very much a sense of just not being, not knowing where to start, you know, because so much was going wrong. It was so intense. And I was just like, well, I, I don't really know what to say anymore <laughs> anymore as well. Like, you know, we've been very critical of, of, of all sorts of aspects of society and, and have been sort of quite overt in our social commentary. And so many things that we have been talking about for, for quite a while have, have been <laughs> coming to, to light into, into the mainstream sort of consciousness. 
And so I saw that happening and I just sort of sat a bit, I just felt a bit sick. I couldn't, I couldn't write, which was, which is weird. And I've hated, and I think it's that that's been one of the most difficult things for, for my like personal mental health is I haven't had that outlet. I haven't had that catharsis, that, that sense of, um, get, you know, getting the demon out of you sort of, sort of thing. Um, so, so yeah, I, uh, luckily I just put all my creative energies in, into the book. Um, and that just, just took over really. Um, but no, I, I still haven't written anything. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, I've, I've tried a bit on and off with not much, uh, luck yet. Um, and that, that's when the anxiety starts to roll in as it does at the beginning of at beginning of every writing period for a new album. I'm like, Oh Christ, can we do this again? Like you look back at albums previous, you look at other people's albums and they're like these completed things of majesty and you're like bloody hell how do we do that like again um but we'll get there i i, I i'm confident we will but there isn't um there isn't a, a route yet that we've we've discovered well good job you've given fans plenty of other stuff to be uh to be getting on with yeah a live album a book and a december tour absolutely yeah that's the focus for now on that note ralph thank you very much for your time nick thank you so much for having me cheers yeah.